good morning and thank you the organizer Federica for inviting me. So I will show you in this presentation uh, the, which is the approach of flow cytometry for the diagnosis of lymphoid malignancies. Um, I put uh, into context my, my, the cells uh, that uh, are used for this purpose. So we are talking about uh, hemato, um, hematopoietic cells and in particular about uh, lymphoid cells and in particular about B cells. Uh, first of all, because this is a good example for the lymphoid malignancy and also because uh, uh, a particular um, uh, leukemia that uh, comes from the B cells is uh, the topic uh, of my research, so I have more, um, more data and more example for this. So uh, we need to know, first of all, uh, which is the normal uh, cell maturation of these cells. Uh, B cells... Um, yeah. The, the first step of uh, maturation of B cells are in the bone marrow when uh, the cell mature here and the maturation means that uh, this cell exposes on the surface uh, the immunoglobulins uh, which are the characteristic of these cells. So then the cells move to the migrate to lymph node where uh, there are the further steps of maturation from naive to mature cells passing through the germinal center. And then uh, they differentiate to plasma cells that are cells that produce the antibodies and uh, these cells migrate uh, again uh, to the bone marrow. And the other cells, uh, mature cells, uh, go into the blood and uh, also in um, causal associated lymphoid tissues. So uh, the neoplastic transformation uh, uh, can occur to all uh, these steps of maturation. For example, from uh, neoplastic transformation of immature cells, uh, we have uh, pre B acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and uh, from naive cells, we can have mantle cell lymphoma, for example, or a subgroup of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And uh, for, from uh, neoplastic transformation of plasma cells, we have multiple myel myeloma and so on. So um, historically, um, the um, classification and characterization of lymphoma um, relied on the morphological and clinical evaluation. But uh, with the improvement of the, the genomic, uh, genetic techniques, and also of uh, flow cytometry, um, in uh, 2001 and later in 2008, uh, there was this World Health Organization uh, classification that uh, took in con into consideration also flow cytometry for the classification and characterization of lymphoma. So it was the first uh, recognized use of flow cytometry for uh, um, the handling of um, lymphoid malignancies. And another important uh, um, uh, milestone is represented by this congress uh, that took place in Bethesda in 2006. And uh, here in this, uh, there was uh, this international consensus recommendation on the flow cytometry immunophenotypic analysis of uh, hematological uh, neoplasia. So um, the consensus uh, was on a list of a clinical indication that to support the use of flow cytometry, for example, in the case of uh, elevated lymphocyte count in uh, organomegaly and tissue masses. And then indication for patient monitoring, for example, for the staging of the disease, uh, documentation of progression, relapse, uh, prognosticator, and so on. So according to this uh, consensus, uh, the um, current approach uh, of flow cytometry in the lymphoid, uh, in general, hematological malignancies, is, uh, can be divided in four main steps. Uh, uh, the identification of cell lineage, developmental stage, the presence of a clonal population, and then a detailed immunophenotype. Uh, I will show you all uh, these steps. So for uh, the identification of cell lineage, uh, these cells, as you can see, are very heterogeneous. And uh, the neoplastic transformation can uh, um, occur at all uh, these cell uh, lineages. 
So the question uh, when uh, uh, the patient presents with, uh, for example, um, uh, an increase in lymphocyte count or with the masses, uh, the, the question in which cell underwent the neoplastic transformation. So uh, we have, uh, first of all, to identify the cell lineage. And uh, we do so by using a getting, a getting strategy that relies on the physical properties of the cell and on the immunological feature. The, immun the physical properties, uh, as you well know, are uh, uh, done by using these two, um, the forward scatters and side scatter, that of course recognize the dimension and the complexity, the granularity of the cells. And the immunological features relies on uh, the expression of particular protein. The first I will uh, present you is uh, CD45, that is a um, so-called pan leukocyte marker, because it's expressed by all cells, uh, uh, hematopoietic cells. Um, this marker, I, here I show the CD45 expression versus the stages of cell maturation. It's uh, expressed at low level at the beginning of uh, an initial stage of maturation, and then it increases its expression in uh, lymphocyte, monocyte, and granulocytes, and decreases in erythrocytes. In fact, uh, erythrocytes mature, erythrocytes are CD45 negative. And also, these three lineages have different levels of CD45 expression. Um, so, uh, which are the samples that uh, are used for the flow cytometry evaluation of uh, lymphoma and leukemia? Uh, peripheral blood, of course, bone marrow, lymph node, in, uh, and in this case we use a biopsy of fine needle aspirates, and these are the main, uh, the main uh, samples that, that are used. And uh, uh, according to the sample we are using, there are some differences in the gating strategies. Here I will show you some examples. Uh, this is our peripheral blood, and uh, the size, uh, as I told you, you use the size of the cell to uh, recognize the granulocytes from uh, monocytes and the granulocytes. Here is the forward scatter. You see uh, monocytes and granulocytes have almost uh, the, the same uh, dimension compared to the smaller lymphocytes. And the side scatter is more useful since uh, uh, the granularity of the cells uh, allows you to identify very well uh, granulocytes from uh, monocytes and uh, lymphocytes. Then uh, the immunological gate uh, uses uh, the um, a side scatter with uh, this pan leukocyte marker, CD45. And uh, as I showed you before, uh, you have different uh, uh, levels of uh, this uh, expression, expression of CD45. In fact, lymphocytes have their higher expression. You, you can discriminate very well this population from monocytes and granulocytes. Uh, um, in the peripheral blood, so you can use, uh, uh, as I told you, forward versus side scatter. But in this case, uh, its uh, lymphocyte cannot, uh, be, cannot be discriminated very well since there are residual uh, not uh, lysed erythrocytes. So here CD45 is very helpful because it uh, mm, separates very well uh, the residual not lysed erythrocytes from the leukocytes. And here you can gate uh, your uh, population of interest. Um, in this case, uh, uh, for Robert side scatter, mm, you can see that there is a strange population here, and uh, so mm, you you can already uh, discriminate this by for Robert side scatter. But uh, CD45 uh, can uh, help because uh, by CD45 expression, you can see that this population is a mm, lymphocytic population because it's it has a high 45 expression. And uh, these are large lymphocytes that are, of course, <coughs> neoplastic. Uh, here I move to uh, the bone marrow. Bone marrow uh, always requires CD45 because uh, it has a more complicated uh, pattern of cells. Uh, you have always uh, um, this uh, kind of, uh, almost always this kind of uh, appearance. So you need a CD45 expression to separate uh, erythroblasts that are present in the normal bone marrow. 
And then you can also discriminate very well, again, a lipocyte, monocyte, granulocyte, and also blast immature cells uh, that have uh, lower CD45 expression. And this is a leaf node preparation, and in this case, uh, uh, CD45 is not so useful since, uh, as you know, leaf, uh, lymph node is composed mainly by lymphocytes, so all, we, all cells are CD45 uh, positive. Um, and uh, using four reversal side scatter, you can see there are two populations. This, uh, what is this smaller population? These are apoptotic dead cells uh, because in this preparation it always, uh, um, for the manipulation of the samples, uh, it's easy to have apoptotic or dead cells that of course uh, we have to exclude, exclude from the analysis. So uh, it is useful to use a vital stain in, in the preparation of this sample. Um, okay, uh, then I show you 45, which is expressed by all the cells, but then we have uh, the so-called lineage-specific marker. Each uh, lineage has uh, a marker that uh, is present at all stages in the life cycle of the cell, from early progenitors to terminally, terminally differentiated cells. And for example, uh, B cells, you know, uh, express CD19, CD3 is 40 cells, uh, CD16 for NK cells, uh, and CD15 for the um, granulocytes, 14 for monocytes. So from, uh, to identify the cell lineage from uh, peripheral blood, you first get your cells uh, in a CD45 uh, uh, side scatter um, plot, then uh, CD19 positive discriminate B cells from T cells that, that are CD3 positive and K cells CD16 positive. And uh, it's important to know also the proportion of this uh, uh, population since uh, uh, here is, uh, mm, you, you can see there is something strange because you almost don't, uh, don't have uh, granulocytes, you have uh, almost all lymphocytes. And uh, looking at the same plots, uh, you see that there is an increase in the B cell population, CD19 positive. So, uh, talking about normal B cell differentiation, uh, the, 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 the cell lineage the marker is, uh, as I told you, CD19. CD19 is expressed at all stages of B cell differentiation, at lower level at the initial stages, but then it's always expressed and then it decreases in the plasma cell. But um, this characteristic makes it a good uh, lineage marker. So when you get B cells, you need to um, get on lymphocytes, and then you easily identify CD19 positive cells. But uh, sometimes uh, CD19 can be dim in some lymphomas, uh, for example. So uh, this is an example of a lymph node preparation. So first of all, you get on the vital nucleated cells, uh, all our uh, lymphocytes, and then uh, CD19 is not so um, well expressed. So it's difficult to discriminate positive versus negative. So in this case, we can use another marker, which is CD20, um, that is expressed not as a CD19 at all stages of this differentiation, but it's uh, almost all present uh, from uh, pre B cells uh, to mature memory cells. So <coughs> if we add uh, CD20 to our staining, we can uh, well discriminate the CD19, 20 positive population from residual cells. Uh, then we jump to developmental stage. So again, this cartoon uh, to show you two important markers to discriminate the developmental stage. So one is CD20 that, uh, as I told you, it's not present uh, in uh, immature cells and also in plasma cells, uh, it decreases. And then it increases in this phase and uh, has a strong expression in the germinal center of the uh, lymph node. Mm, CD10 is uh, as a opposite behavior since it's expressed in the, uh, in the first step of maturation, then its expression decreases and uh, comes again in the, the germinal center of the lymph node. So a normal uh, bone marrow 
um, is uh, composed by all uh, different population at different, uh, different uh, uh, developmental stages. So we have uh, the few CD10 positive but 20 negative cells and then we go on with the maturation and we have uh, here mature cells that lose CD10 but have high expression of CD20. In um, anoplastic transformation, uh, this uh, is um, completely different. So we have an increase of a population, in this case of a follicular lymphoma uh, CD10, expressing CD10. We have a, a normal proportion of these uh, cells that are 10 and 20 positive. Uh, then a presence of a clonal population, what the clonal population means. So we have an example of a heterogeneous B lymphocytes and here is a clonal population. And uh, what is the characteristic to discriminate a clonal from a, um, a heterogeneous population? It's uh, the B cell receptor because uh, each B cell encodes uh, a unique BCR with a unique specificity. And uh, the specificity, as you probably know, is due to uh, the um, rearrangement of the genes uh, of the immunoglobulins. So uh, every segment uh, is just opposed in a single segment uh, here to uh, build uh, the heavy and the light chains. Of course, flow cytometry is not able to discriminate uh, the different sequences, but what the flow cytometry does uh, is to uh, look at the light chain because light chains can be or kappa, either kappa or lambda and uh, in the normal B cell population we have uh, this uh, ratio for light chain so uh, two to one uh, two kappa versus one uh, lambda so in a normal B cell uh, uh, population here is what we found uh, two to one ratio for kappa and lambda chains in an abnormal uh, context, we have uh, the proliferation of a clonal population, in this case kappa, and so we can, uh, uh, from this plot, we can uh, understand that uh, the cells we are looking at are clonal. Uh, it's not always so straightforward because uh, sometimes uh, uh, neoplastic B cells are mixed uh, with normal B cells, for example, in sample staking after treatment on the staging of marrow aspirates. Uh, so, for example, here we have a CD19 gated uh, cell. We have uh, both lambda and kappa. We cannot understand if something is wrong. But if we add again uh, this uh, marker, CD20, we see that uh, there is a population that express, expresses lower level of CD20 and uh, 19 positive, and this is the clonal population that expresses, uh, in this case, kappa. The residual normal B cells uh, have uh, the, the common uh, ratio from uh, kappa and uh, lambda. The final step is uh, detailed in monophenotypes. So after having gated our cells of interest, we have uh, to uh, perform uh, a more detailed monophenotype. Uh, and uh, this uh, additional immunophenotyping is useful for, of course, diagnosis, to help in the classification of the different uh, lymphoid malignancies, also to detect potential therapeutic targets for the assessment of response to therapy. I will show you some example of uh, min minimal residual disease, and also in the prognostication of the lymphoid malignancies. So, uh, these are a list of very useful markers that uh, are used in the in B cell malignancies. Since, uh, as you can see, sometimes they are expressed, uh, sometimes they are negative, or um, importantly, also they can be uh, you can discriminate because sometimes are dim, sometimes are bright, and uh, this is the real advantage of flow cytometry compared to other techniques, uh, for example, immunohistochemistry. Chemistry. Uh, where the intensity is not so easy to, um, to assess. So, uh, this is the approach, for example, for B cell lymphoma. You first use this marker, CD5, because if it's positive, then you can use uh, another set of markers that, according to their level of expression, they um, address you to uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia or mantle cell lymphoma. And in the case CD5 is negative, uh, you can perform uh, CD10 staining 
and uh, here you have all the flow chart to uh, be able to understand uh, of which malignancy you are uh, talking about. Uh, of course, uh, one important thing is uh, that all these data have to be integrated with the morphologic and in particular genetic data because each uh, lymphoid malignancies uh, or most of the lymphoid malignancies also have uh, a genetic uh, signature in terms of, uh, for example, translocations. Um, another important point is to use flow cytometry to detect uh, potential therapeutic targets and this is the case, for example, of anti-CD52 or anti-CD20 that is known as uh, rituximab. Uh, because the levels of expression may influence the treatment outcome of the patients. So here I reported the example in a chronic lymphocytic leukemia, um, where I don't know if, uh, if you are familiar with this curve, but uh, uh, the, the higher the curve and the better the prognosis. So here patients are divided into groups according to specific uh, features. In this, in this case, it's a, a wild type uh, Notch 1s and uh, a mutated Notch 1. Notch 1 is a gene that can be mutated in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And then uh, uh, the discrimination in between two kinds of, of therapy. One is a uh, um, common therapy, FC, fludarabine cyclophosphamide, with the, the addition of R, which stands for rituximab. In this case, you see that the only group of patients that benefits from the addition of a rituximab is uh, the wild type uh, notch one group and uh, we in our study we I, I won't go into detail but it's just to to show we like this example um, we we show that uh, this uh, particular uh, group of patients express lower level of uh, cd20 and we also um, describe the, the the mechanism of uh, this uh, decreased expression of uh, cd20 so going on to the assessments of response to therapy, the minimal residual disease is uh, the evidence for the presence of residual malignant cells um, that, um, in the absence of a clinical symptoms, so very few cells. And the methods that are used for MRD detection are, of course, flow cytometry, not in all the malignancies, but here I listed some of uh, um, of uh, malignancy that uh, uses flow cytometry, and then there are cytogenetics and, uh, of course, genetic methods that are PCR-based techniques. Uh, the flow cytometry the, um, is uh, um, the, 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 the strength of flow cytometry is the capability of identifying and enumerating rare subpopulation with the, within a complex cellular mixture in blood or bone marrow. Um, by flow cytometry, so um, you need uh, uh, the, the antibodies, level antibodies uh, versus cell uh, surface or cytoplasmic uh, proteins to identify an immunophenotype uh, that relies uh, uh, on the recognition, uh, recognition of features on, uh, this, um, on cell in the samples that differ from those uh, seen on normal cells. Uh, uh, that are similar for maturational uh, stage and lineage. So you need uh, some specific uh, um, uh, antibodies that uh, are some, somehow different uh, from the normal B-cell uh, counterpart. Um, the, the events that are uh, recommended for this uh, MRD detection are on about 20, um, 50 events. And uh, in the case of flow cytometry, uh, in the case of chronic lymphocytic leukemia, but also in other malignancies, uh, patients are defined as having undetectable MRD. Uh, in, um, they are in remission if they have blood or marrow with less than one CLL cell per 10,000 leukocytes. And it means uh, that uh, you have uh, to um, you, you are in this uh, range of sensitivity and you have to acquire at least two to five, uh, 200 uh, or half a million uh, events. Uh, in uh, in a, an example uh, in CLL is the user, the guidelines suggest the use of this panel of six markers because uh, in uh, CLL cells express lower level or CD81 
here, CD 79B and lower level of CD 20 respect to normal B cells and uh, also uh, respect to progenitors and plasma blasts that have higher expression for CD43 and 81 and do not express CD5, which is a peculiarity of uh, CLL cells. Then uh, uh, flow cytometry is used also for prognostication. What is a prognostic factor? A prognostic factor is a variable that is available at the time of diagnosis and that can be used to estimate the chance of recovery from a disease or the chance also to disease to relapse. Uh, it differs from the predictive factor because predictive factor is a variable that identifies a subgroup of uh, treated patients that uh, have different uh, clinical outcome. Uh, these are the cures that I showed you before, so the higher the curve, the better the prognosis. And uh, what you need uh, to build uh, this curve? You need a dichotomous variable, of course, so positive versus negative or bright versus dim expression. Um, and so uh, expression above or below a definite threshold. Uh, what is uh, the approach for uh, prostatometry? First, you measure the level of expression of, the, of a definite protein. Then you define a cutoff using a clinical readout. And then you split patient into groups according to positive uh, or bright or negative dim expression. Here I reported two examples in chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which are the expression of ZAP70 and uh, cd 49 d so ZAP70 is a TCR-associated cytoplasmic protein. It's expressed at variable level in CLL, and a positive expression is associated with worse prognosis. But what uh, does positive expression mean for ZAP70? So ZAP70 is an intracellular marker, so you need a staining with surface marker to discriminate B cells, uh, and in the, this case, chronic lymphocytic leukemia cells, BCD19, CD5 positive, and T cells, CD3 positive. Then you need to fix permeabilize the sample and staining with the, an anti uh, ZAP70 or control is type. Uh, there are two methods for the analysis. One is the so called ISO method that uh, uses two tubes, uh, one with the isotypic control and one with ZAP17, and the T method that uses only one tube. Uh, the second one, of course. Uh, so you get your cell lymphocytes, chronic lymphocytic leukemia cells, CD5, CD19 positive, and then you analyze your cells. So the first method is an ISO method. You put a marker at the right of your negative population, and then you evaluate the shift for uh, your um, for ZAP70 in your B population. The T method uh, uses T cells, that is an internal control because T cells are always positive, and you set the marker at the left of this population and evaluate the shift of uh, CLL population. So you have two different uh, uh, percentages. And the percent of expression, what is it? It's the percent of the cell population that expresses a, a given protein above a definite marker and uh, usually it's at uh, the margin of unstained cells. It doesn't mean that 30% uh, of cells are positive uh, and the other 70% are negative, but uh, it uh, gives you an idea of the um, um, uh, intensity of, uh, this, uh, of this expression. So uh, first you measure the level of expression is up, uh, of the 70 in a large cohort. Then you define a cutoff using clinical readout. In this, I won't explain this graph, but uh, it um, uh, you um, you um, you use, for example, uh, overall survival as clinical readout, and uh, you look if uh, there is a cutoff, a best cutoff, able to discriminate two groups in, uh, in that uh, behave differently. And then you use, this, you use this cutoff, 20%, to divide your sample into groups. And uh, uh, in this case, you see that uh, 70 negative patients have a um, better clinical behavior compared to the 
pos 70 positive. Uh, the example of uh, CD49D, uh, 49D is an adhesion molecule, so it's expressed uh, on the surface of the cells. Uh, it's expressed at variable levels in CLL, and uh, again, the positive expression is associated with the worst prognosis. But what uh, positive expression means in the case of CD49D? Uh, here it's uh, very simple because it's a surface marker, you need uh, the iris staining uh, with uh, this uh, marker, these antibodies. Uh, you get your cells uh, uh, 5 versus 19, then you set uh, the negative, uh, the marker on the negative population, the negative cells, uh, is a type control, and then you, you evaluate uh, the percent of positivity uh, using CD49 expression. Again, uh, measure the level of expression in a large cohort, uh, you define a cutoff using a clinical readout, in this case uh, uh, the common uh, uh, found uh, red, um, cutoff is uh, 30%, and then you split patient into groups, uh, and you can define two groups uh, with different uh, survival probability. Um, so here uh, I, I wanted to show you the, the comparison bit, uh, between these two prognostic markers, because uh, um, in the case of uh, ZAP70, you see that distribution is uh, almost uh, the, the all patients are well distributed uh, among uh, all the values, in particular around uh, the cutoff. Here, CD14 and the expression can be either negative or positive uh, most, in most of the cases. So here is uh, the cutoff. So you see that in these cases, many patients can be misclassified from one group to another. And this is uh, one of the characteristics that makes uh, CD49D as a, a strongest flow cytometry-based predictor of overall survival in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And uh, this is a paper uh, from, uh, also from our group. So uh, to conclude, uh, flow cytometry uh, is a critical tool uh, for uh, lymphoid malignancies. Uh, and it helps in the diagnosis, classification, uh, disease monitoring as minimal residual disease, and also in the prognosticators. And uh, of course, uh, the increase in the number of lasers and parameters uh, with a greater availability of uh, fluorochromes will improve all these steps. Finished. Thank you.